Hello everybody, I'm Jonathan, otherwise known as Senor Smoke, here at Curto's in Westchester County, your source for everything outdoor cooking. I thought it'd be very helpful to do something different with uh, the video posts. Um, what I'm going to do is I want to analyze an outdoor kitchen uh, that we recently uh, finished and I thought this would actually be helpful for those of you who are in the planning stages already or possibly thinking about doing an outdoor space maybe for next spring um, and what we'll do is we'll analyze the components that were used in the build not only for the appliances but also materials as well and kind of talk about the logic of the flow of the space I'm gonna I'm really trying to make this video shorter um, so I'm gonna be very short quick pithy to the point and then I'll try to have a more in-depth um, uh, post in text on the blog so the first one I want to discuss is one that we recently finished in White Plains and this is a DCS outdoor kitchen um, DCS has always been a, a brand that we've embraced over here on the outdoor side of things they are the granddaddy of the premium outdoor cooking space and um, um, I was very happy to wrap my arms around this project. Uh, the customer had a DCS in years past, didn't want to hear about anything else. And considering I own a DCS, I could speak very clearly and articulate the merits of this brand. It is, it is the hottest, hottest, most powerful burner out there. I don't care what the BTU ratings are. I have eight girls in my house. I have several gas premium girls and the DCS is by far the most powerful. Um, so anyway, what we did, this was an actually pretty sizable outdoor kitchen, as you can see from the space here. And we're going to move left to right on the build-out. The first thing they did on the, uh, on the left side of the L, um, you'll see what I find to be a very, very um, kind of like hidden stealth under the radar um, product. But it is extremely important. I sell this with DCS and I also sell the Alfresco version. That is the dry storage pantry that is 42 inches wide. Um, why is this so important? Uh, because what it does is it allows you to store product, whether it's your condiments, cooking materials, tools, and have a sealed setting for it. Because if you just get access doors, it's open to everything, to the elements, to critters, dirt. Um, so there's really no storage capacity or functionality with access doors they're basically there to shut off gas to get to other utilities but the dry storage pantry is so so key pretty much every alfresco outdoor kitchen we sell has it in them the dcs one is again it's a very very kind of like it's a hidden piece not talked about a lot but it's great um, the it's wrapped in stainless stainless interior the uh, the drawers slide out beautifully they did a great job with the ball bearings on this I'm telling you particularly if your outdoor kitchen is far away from your normal kitchen your indoor kitchen and you need you need to store things you want to have a dry storage pantry so on DCS side of things it's 42 inches wide uh, that's what we did on the far left typically we will see these underneath the grill in this case, they put it to the far left. Shuttling closer to the grill now, we have the side burner. Now with DCS, this is a double side burner, and on the DCS with the promotion, uh, they've been doing this for several years now, and they continue, it's a great deal. You buy the grill head, and you get some type of access door, you get a free side burner. So they took advantage of that, and they have the double side burner running next. Um, after the side burner, we get to the grill. The 48 inch DCS grill is one of the largest grills on the marketplace because the, what they did is they don't have a sear burner in it. They don't need an infrared sear burner because every single burner can sear because it's so damn hot. So if you took the Lynx 54, the Wolf 54, which is a Twin Eagle, uh, the Alfresco 56, the DCS is actually going to provide more normal grilling space because it's purely 40 inches of hellfire um, normal grilling you could either have it at a very tame low or have it just spitting Godzilla flames out if need be at the sear level so you're going to get the most grilling space on the DCS 48 and boy does it look grand sitting centered in this kitchen moving shuttling over to the right now um, what we have is they, this is where they actually put access doors and underneath the sink 
they did this again so they could access the utilities, the, uh, the water lines and what have you, and they're actually accessing the gas from there as well. What you don't see behind the island, there's one more access door behind there. That's actually what they're using for electric and for the gas shutoff. Not much to talk about the access doors. You're definitely going to need them. Um, moving over again from the sink and the access door, they put uh, drawers in there. And the drawers, these are going to be used for tools because she told me that the dry storage pantry was going to be for condiments and uh, other you know, cooking apparatus, whereas the, uh, the, uh, the drawers are going to be for their tools. Um, and then moving finally over to the right, we have the DCS refrigerator which a um, very nice piece and uh, you know this one goes for about $2,500 it's certainly not inexpensive but it matches everything else and it's a well-performing refrigerator and relatively quiet which some of these outdoor refrigerators can be very 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 uh, loud uh, that is the appliance side of things um, in terms of the actual structure they opted not to do a veneer um, they built a concrete footing on the porch, on the patio, and they built this out of masonry, out of block, which still is the most popular way to go. But, and as we can tell you about in great detail, if you come in, a growing, growing segment of the outdoor kitchens are starting to see built with materials such as hardy board, wonder board, and then using veneers around it. We can get into this. You're not going to need a concrete footing for that. They're becoming very, very popular, a quicker build and a little bit less expensive. Um, her mason wanted to use block and wanted to use stone, so we were good with that. We got a, um, a granite countertop. Um, I was actually at the house uh, shortly after the build was done, and I did notice a lot of rain. Had, uh, there was a lot of rain that had occurred in days prior, and there was still a lot of water. I think they could have done a slightly better job pitching the, uh, the countertops. So that's something very important you want to talk to your contractors about. Um, you want your counters pitched, or you're going to have lots of water sitting up there and potentially going into your appliances. Bad, bad, bad. But remember, folks, when you're planning these, we can help you with that. We do a hell of a lot more than sell the metal. Um, still think DCS, they made some nice tweaks to the grill in the last couple of years. I have a lot of videos about that, and um, they're definitely something to be considered, especially if you don't care about having a sear burner, they're going to give you the most real estate. Um, I'll have more information in depth about the island build out. If there's any questions, we are here to help. We will help you with your outdoor kitchen no matter where you are in this country. And yes, we can even help you build it in the tri-state area. So please, Jonathan at Curtos.com, that's the way to contact me or come visit the showroom here in beautiful and bucolic Yonkers, New York, just five minutes south of Scarsdale. Thank you. Peace out.